The big one. Extremely dangerous. Welcome back to Sloppy's Weeaboo Corner. Today is the anniversary of the Weeaboo Corner. Do -do -do. We, it's the Sloppy's Weeaboo, Weeaboo Corner anniversary double feature. Yes, my friends of the Weeaboo Corner in which I haven't uploaded in long enough because we're gonna explore in today's double feature video. For some reason, I'm holding recording this in my hand, meaning that when we open our first part of the double feature, which is traditional for, uh, I guess, we started this channel with this type of video, but not a double feature. There you go, I'm about to slide you down for this one, there you go. But a figure review. We're gonna have, we're gonna, this is a double feature, boys and girls. There are gonna be two videos because they're gonna be separated. Technically three, there's gonna be this double feature video. Uh, and then individual reviews for two of the things that we have in this video, which is this figure, our Jonathan Joestar figure of Phantom Blood. My favorite part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, good old Johnny boy. Joe Star, this is a box. It's made by Bandai Namco. Yeah. So let's. It's uh, from their master release. And as tradition for uh, JoJo's figure, the face doesn't look exactly correct. And behind the box, we have their so far master collection of Phantom Blood. And then in the back, and blacked out, are the other parts Battle Tendency, Stardust Crusaders. Diamond is Unbreakable, and the Holy Grail of JoJo faces, which you can kind of see. I'm trying to like, get it super close zoomed in. I'll probably put a picture up as well for better accuracy. <laughs> uh, Golden Winds Giorno Giovanna. So yeah, we're going to be starting with part one for the JoJo figures. I don't have all of them in today's video, of course. Uh, but here is our Jonathan Joestar. And just looking at the box, everything looks sculpted, which I'm actually okay with. I like it when everything's all good and done in one piece. Ugh. And I might need to explain something. So in the Ichika figure review, I use Sid's little It Came, It Finally Came clip from Toy Story 1. I just thought that'd be funny because, hey, it's something physical, even though that is more suited for our double, fe our, our double feature. Not really because the Ijika one took a long time to ship. It actually came in like a week, maybe a week, week and a half. And, which actually wasn't that long. It came within the time period I said it was. And I'm explaining as I open up all the tape, that clip is gonna be used in the rest of the figure reviews, as you can obviously tell. And when suited fit, meaning I should have stuck it in the beginning of the Berserk video, but I did it because the manga reviews usually open up with the anime's opening which I would uh, started actually doing with, I believe the first one I did it with was Dead Man Wonderland. And I actually have a Chainsaw Man, a Nagatoro, a Fire Punch, and a Laid Back Camp review of all planet as well as all parts of JoJo's up until part five, uh, as well as Renter Girlfriend and Evangelion uh, proper reviews. But currently I'm just waiting on uh, me getting all those clips settled in together because I have very limited storage when it comes to editing and the images that I use take up a lot of storage because they're fairly detailed and now you guys are probably telling me to hurry the fuck up and just get to the figure which I am but I just wanted to stick in a little bit of an explanation and uh, do not worry the actual figure review sec separated videos are gonna be much more condensed in this part. This stuff is gonna be uh, cut out, the fleshed out stuff where I'm talking to you right here, as you can tell. There you go. Uh, ah, so this is tucked in. Yeah, I got all the tape off, by the way. Probably could have mentioned that. But here. Oh, no, I didn't. There was one in the handle. I should have noticed that. Okay. There's layers to it. It's like an onion. Or some fucker's face. Oh, how I love you, Mob of the Dead. 
It's in a nice, lovely, classic little molding. Oh, okay. I guess it was just the head that was in the plastic molding, which that makes me laugh. There's plastic molding for the feet. And like all my other figures, we keep the boxes, break them down. Not because I ever think I'm gonna sell them, because I most likely won't, knowing me. But whenever I need to move, all I need to do is stuff it with tissue. And breaking it down saves, saves a lot of space. All right, and it is all one piece. Awesome, that's great, there's nothing to assemble. Make sure you see him in his little grab bag. And actually, the face looks a lot better than it does on the box, which I think is actually kind of cool. Wow. Part four, actually, Diamond is Unbreakable, is my second favorite part. But it has some really cool moments that I love. Like its first opening. All of the openings of JoJo's are great, as I have said in my opening reaction video. But I kind of like part one a little bit more, just because it's classic and it's a little bit unappreciated within the JoJo's parts. And here is our man, Jonathan Joestar, in his prime. There's actually no bottom to the feet holds, except in his right foot, in which case there is a heel stand. A heel stando. So at least I can't shove him too far down and make him stand uneven. There we go. Here we are. That is our boy Jonathan Joestar. Just to separate them for separate the the foothold and the figure. It's all molded in one piece, as I stated earlier, which I like. Uh, and unless you look into the pockets, which I'm not sure if I can get a, the right angle on here, unless you look actually into the pockets intentionally. Uh, they actually look like they have a little bit of depth for his hands, which I think is a really nice detail. Everything is painted really nicely and cleanly. Hmm. And it's kind of like his opening yeah, outfit he wears in the opening, which is really cool as well. Everything is nicely detailed. Nicely detailed. I know I say things weird. <laughs> On the side, you have the the little JoJo tap copyright claim. Uh, like right here, you can barely see it on the camera though, so it's fine, oh, there you go, right here. Everything is uh, has good details done. Uh, it's a studded belt, which is cool. The belt buckle is a nice design. Uh, excuse me, oh, and here is the uh, birthmark star of the Joe stars. Very, very cool. Uh, now I just need my own Dio figure. So I can cut off his head and stick it on there. I don't think they made a part one Dio. If they did, that'd be really neat. I'd want, I'd want to get that one as well if they did. So yeah, that is our Jonathan Joestar figure. Very cool. Very great build quality. Uh, as all JoJo figures, he does not have a spine. But, like none of the other JoJo's, he has a butt. And that's really neat. And I like the nice details, the details I gave his hair. I know I say weird things, I, I say words weirdly. So yeah, I'm gonna give Jonathan Joestar bonus points because it's from my favorite JoJo part, from my favorite JoJo part. <laughs> Can't talk. And I'm gonna give him bonus points and give him a nine out of 10 for the figure scale. And he is gonna go nicely on my shelf, which is awesome. And so now I'm going to make the Jonathan Joestar figure my phone stand so I can hold our double feature, which is actually helping prop it up. So for a long time, uh, my Kaiji video actually is no longer my number one most viewed video, which has actually been taken over by the Ichiko review, which I think is crazy. Uh, but the first Kaiji video was my number one most viewed video for a real long time. And now we finally can continue them because nearly a year later, ah, part three, book three finally arrived. 
and it smells wonderful. It has that wonderful new book smell that you would suggest. Immediately after opening it, not in the immediate first few pages that I noticed, uh, it was actually more near the, of course, the middle, uh, everywhere, really, but mostly near the end. The This part three actually took the stand and became a 16 plus book. I think the others were maybe 14 or 12. Actually, let me go check. They're going to come with me because we're going to be looking at the manga. We, we still have to uh, take a peek at and we're actually in a bedroom corner for once. So yeah, let's go. <clears throat> Wow, so yeah, there's Berserk, uh, Super Tommy. Uh, I actually needed to review this. Uh, the second volume to Fist of the North Star, Ghost in the Shell. I'm currently reading part 1.5. Uh, where is Kaiji? Kaiji, Kaiji. All right, here it is. In the back. Uh, Chainsaw Man, I'm caught up. Aside from volume 8, I'm, I'm waiting on that. Uh, parts 1 and 2 to Kaiji. All right. Uh, oh, these were 16 plus, probably for the subject matter. Here we go. Part one was 16 plus, and part two is 16 plus, which is really neat. And that is my uh, Nuka Cola poster in the back. Do, 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 do. I should learn how to edit all this shit out. Ah. So, I don't really have the chance to do the whole, uh, <laughs> Kaiji came out and blah, 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 blah. Actually, I kind of can for Kaiji Volume 3. Oh, there we go. So, of course, Kaiji, the story of Kaiji, has actually several uh, different story installments in the Japanese version. And I think it's become one of the longest-running manga series as of late. Oh, I could be wrong, of course. Whew, here I am, sitting just like our main man on the back. Tired and shit. Ugh. So, yeah. Uh, Kaiji has several story installments. I, from Ultimate Survivor as the name of the anime. Uh, Gambling Apocalypse, which is the uh, English release title. And then... Ultimate Gambler is, I believe, the Japanese title. But there are also uh, multiple different parts to it. I think another one, uh, the second installment, the second season of the anime, and the second story installment is about Kaiji trying to battle a rigged uh, pachinko machine, which is the main version of legal Japanese gambling, because gambling in and of itself is illegal in Japan. So they use pachinko machines, so instead of winning money, you win these balls, and you trade in these balls... These little silver balls for money. Or in some places, products. Which is really cool. God, I'm breathing out really heavily. I need to lose weight. So, Kaiji number three. I'm sorry for the camera tilt. I'm sitting on my bed for crying out loud. Kaiji three is the first part of the human racehorse arc. as I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, and it has a little th story thus far. In the beginning, 20 million in one night. Uh, between Sahara, which is Kaiji's co-worker, uh, Tonagawa, who returns again, the middleman Tonagawa. He's also the one that gave that little speech in the be just before they be begun the uh, restricted rock, paper, scissors game. Uh, Ishida, who is the man Kaiji saved, and then Endo, who is a returning character, and if I believe correctly, he is the... Uh, uh, loan Shark that Kaiji talked to who got him into the gambling scene. Part 3, Volume 3, begins with Commandeered, Chapter 55, uh, where it begins with Kaiji actually making an effort to legally pay off his gambling debt uh, by getting a part-time job with his, you know, little stint at his job because he works at a little gas station co uh convenience store Kambini, with it ending i believe in chapter one as well where he quits his job where he actually does quit his job because his boss accuses him of stealing a shit ton of money and then in response uh because the boss accuses kaiji of stealing the money that's probably in his his little bag 
in response, Kaiji's like, okay, we'll gamble for it. And if you're right, you can have uh, X amount of money. I don't remember which one it was. And as it was with the last one, he gets himself ensnared into another huge gamble worth, I believe, another 20 million. Uh, and this one is a human racehorse, so, or race game, human racehorse game, where they have these really long beams uh, atop this tower, and, uh, well, they're balancing beams across it. There you go, here's a good image. These huge long beams, and they're balancing across. And this is the first half of it, so in this one, it's Kaiji versus, I believe it's 20 or like 12 other people 12 or 20 other people and he has to well ah here's a better one here's a better image a big full double page fold out uh he has to go across these beams to get his money to win the gamble and if you see down below there's a whole bunch of rich people funding this sorry i'm looking at the the well the screen should be looking at the camera so, and there are a whole bunch of rich people funding this this gamble this part of the gamble uh, I don't want to go too much into spoiler territory, but of course I will. And I think it's wonderful. It's really intense. It's so far the most intense volume released for Kaiji. And I also think it's the shortest one, which I'm completely fine with. It took a year to get this out, and I am not disappointed one bit. Uh, I actually have volume 4 and 5 pre-ordered, which are supposed to be arriving. I'm not even going to say, because I don't want to risk another big old delay thing uh big old mess of delays and a uh, quick spoiler moment when they get past the winners of the first bet i realize that there's a second half now if they fall off the beams in the first bet they may get injured well they will get injured because it's a high ass drop but they can't survive and the second one no 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 if they fall that's that's game over they're they're gonna die and once again, Tonegawa convinces them, saying that they're worthless. So if they want to win money, they can put their lives on the line. And just like the last time, if they touch the beam, that's it, game over. But also, I believe this one, the, this time, the beam is electrified. So if they touch it, not only do they get disqualified from winning their money, if they touch it, they're getting zapped and they're falling off. That is awesome. I cannot wait for volume four. The page quality is great. I actually spent more time talking about the figure than the manga. Whew. It's just real, it's a really, really intense read. And as per usual, I'm gonna read the back blurb. Out of the gambling ship and into the dead end job, Kaiji is burdened by his newfound massive gambling debt. However, he is still lucky enough to be invited by the Yakuza once more to risk it all for the chance to escape abject poverty. This time, can he walk across Brave Man's Road? And that's what they're calling it, Brave Man's Road. Denpa, you did it. You, you got yourself redemption. And I can't really say that because it's more of a job on their printers. But still, you did it, Denpa. You got this out, and I am excited. Ah! Lovely, lovely stuff. You can pick this up for 22 bucks. Wonderful. I cannot wait to read volume four, and I'm gonna do what I did for when I got volume two, which is reread the previous volumes and then go into volume two. So I'm gonna go do that again. I'm gonna reread volumes one and two, and then I'm gonna reread volume three. I cannot wait. It is gonna be one really, really good ride with everything boom, 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 boom. So yeah, I really do suggest you pick this up. And I don't think I actually touched on this. I might have said it and then I forgot to specify. Uh, and this, they really crank it up and they're like, you know what? Fuck it. So there's language in this one. There's swears in it and I'm actually excited. And so <laughs> he's like, there's actual swearing in this and that makes me kind of excited. But no, it's kind of mirrored. It's hard to see. At least it is for me. Uh, but he's like, but there are a lot of swear. There's a lot of swearing on this, which I'm actually kind of happy about because I don't like when they censor the language. 
and the faded Zawa returns. Dun dun dun. So yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. And this actually takes place four months after the Espoir uh, gamble, which is the restricted rock, paper, scissors. So I cannot wait for volume four and volume five, because volume five, uh, I believe, takes place during the Emperor, Slave, and Citizen gamble between Kaiji and Tongawa. And in which case, that is going to be really intense as well, so... Amazing work, Denpa. You did it. Congratulations. Uh, volume 3, I'm going to just give it another 8 out of 10. Good job. So that was it for our Christmas anniversary double feature. Uh, the Weeboo Corner channel, and the channel in and of itself has gone through multiple name changes, mostly just sloppy, sloppy, and then blank, or let me do some things and then blank. But it has been around for, I think, two, three years in and of itself. You could see that when it was created, but I actually started uploading videos about last year, this time last year. I believe it is exactly this time last year when I reviewed uh, the Goku and Gogeta figures, which are sitting over there on my shelf. Da -da -da -da, over there. I cannot zoom in, but they're there. They're over there. Well, and that's Gogeta and that's Goku. And then I have some other smaller stuff as well as some other figures I reviewed. Uh, each get figure is actually in front, which I think is really neat. But we're going to need to find room for Johnny Joe, Jonathan Joe Star over here, not Johnny. That's part seven. But yeah. Ah, we got the gay European, and then we're going to finish off. We're going we're gonna to get the other one soon. And yes, I am wearing a Patriots hat. I'm a Patriots fan. Leave me alone. But, anyways, that is it from the Weeb Sloppy of the Weeb Corner. Kaiji 3 in the books. I will be doing a separate review on this, by the way. So it's not just this little quick blurb. And yeah, you can expect these separated videos within the week, of course. I'm going to give myself some hang time because today is Christmas. So yeah, that is Jonathan Joestar figure from far apart. His face, far away, his, figure, his face looks kind of weird. And as Andy Kaiji Volume 3 book. That is it. I'm your boy. And your host, Sloppy of the Weeba Corner. Happy one year anniversary. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.